It's tournament time for Cheesecake the Antweight Combat Robot. But first, what's new with the robot? As I promised in my last video, I'm using smaller wheels with springy spokes to protect my drive motors from impacts, and I switched from 33 to 1 gearboxes to 22 to 1 gearboxes to not lose any speed. I also designed some new mounts for my drive motors to make them easier to replace, I got a custom brass bushing to support the end of my weapon motor, and I made my weapon smaller. Why did I make my weapon smaller? Well, I've been running some tests, and I discovered that the air resistance of a spinning weapon puts a huge load on the motor, drawing a lot of current and making the motor spin much slower than its theoretical no-load speed. So with a smaller weapon, you get less air resistance to bog down the motor, which allows the motor to spin faster, and so the smaller weapon actually ends up storing the same amount of kinetic energy as the larger weapon because of this increase in speed, with less weight and less current draw. The only downside is a slight reduction in reach, which is totally worth it. Totally worth it! With these upgrades made, Cheesecake and I flew to Chicago to attend the Windy City Showdown, sponsored by Palm Beach Bots. I received a buy in the first round, so my first actual fight was against Bugbite, a Viper kit with a nasty horizontal spinner. The time limit on each fight is just two minutes, so there's no time to waste. This was a very clean fight for me, and I'm very happy with the damage my new weapon did, although Bugbite did take a nice bite out of my side armor, and that floor seam is going to keep being an issue. My next fight was against Bocce the Bot, a very clever vertical drum spinner with massive foam wheels, like a hybrid of Huge and Copperhead. It's based on the Hellraiser kit, but the large wheels are something new. Three. Alright, that went very well, and the weapon-to-weapon -weapon hits definitely worked in my favor. An autopsy showed that it was indeed the power switch that killed Bocce the bot, although he still took a nice chunk out of my butt before that. My next fight was against Robobot, a modified baby nautiloid kit running on 4S voltage with a very high KV weapon motor.
Okay, that was insane. That might be my favorite fight ever. Look at those hits. I was honestly amazed that Cheesecake kept working for so long, and I was definitely lucky to damage Robobot's drive just enough to make him high center himself. I was also very happy that these collisions sent both robots flying sideways, because it seems to indicate that my horizontal spinner was getting the better of those exchanges. So I won by knockout, but what did it cost? Everything. The final big hit absolutely destroyed my weapon, and the tip got completely ripped off. But at least the entire weapon didn't pop off like it used to. You might have also noticed that my drive got very squirrely. That's because my clever new motor mounts broke, allowing my drive motors to spin freely and twist up their wires. In fact, during the fight, you can see one of the little red arms fall out of my robot right there. See that? It's not on the floor. Now it's on the floor. I definitely need to make those stronger. I also took some interesting damage to my armor, but it did hold up, so that's good news. With this victory over Robobot, Cheesecake was heading into the finals with an undefeated record. My final opponent was a vertical spinner named Franklin, who already had one loss, so this meant that I would only take second place if I somehow managed to lose against him twice. This is because it's a double elimination tournament. Now, everyone on the BattleBots TV show says that the fights are won and lost in the pits. This is 100% true, and this is something I'm about to learn the hard way. During the rebuild from my fight with Robobot, I must have accidentally connected the battery backwards at some point, which damaged all three of my speed controllers. As a result, in my final two fights against Franklin, I had no weapon, and my drive was unreliable, and I had no idea why. This is 100% my fault for not making my electronics organized and easy to work with, and it's a painful lesson to learn, so here is that lesson being beaten into me for four minutes. Couldn't even get out of the square. Nice. Weapon stops working. Great job. My driving is terrible because I'm looking down at my transmitter to see if that's the issue. Let's spin it. Run away, try to figure it out. Right, weapons working. Weapons not working. My drive just died for a couple of seconds. Nice. Nice. Five, four, three, two, one. Franklin wins the hell. One last match. Three, two, one. Fight, fight, fight. Oh, oh my God. Oh my God. Yeah, cheesecake, no. Floor seam, stop it. Still trying to figure out what could be wrong.
Nyimut ya Afif, nyimut dulu ya I want you to hit me as hard as you can. Wow. Still trying to figure out what could be wrong. You know what would be nice right now? A wedge. Oh, now I guess it's Don't worry, it won't last. That's after the fight though, it doesn't count. Too late, it's too late here. <laughs> and then I randomly lost half my drive. I'm coming. Get over here! These last two fights were honestly pretty embarrassing, and it's 100% my fault. Franklin won fair and square by being better prepared with much more organized electronics, so that's a hard lesson learned. But hey, this is something I can totally fix, and I still took second place overall, so you know what? I'm happy. This was a fantastic event with so many amazing builders, and I can't wait for the next one. Thanks for watching.